Fetch API is a new web standard that is designed to help developers fetch resources and interact with them, right? And it is replacing this little puppy, XML HTTP request, which we all use. If you have built an AJAX-based uh, page, you must have used XML HTTP request. It's an awful name, <laughs> but it was it was nothing to do with XML, really. Right, if you think about it, just like recently, we don't really work with XML, so it's just JSON and protocol buffer. All right, so in this video, we will learn a little bit about the Fetch API. It's a kind of introduction, but it's a by example, right? Uh, what do you need for this video? What do you need to get started? Nothing, right? We're gonna do it all in the browser because the browser Chrome has a nice console where you can write code here, all right? We're gonna show that, okay? And that, but obviously, you can obviously use Visual Studio Code to write your own code. But in this video, we will learn three different type of fetching using the Fetch API. We're gonna fetch a simple index.html page, we're gonna fetch a JSON file, and we're gonna fetch a binary file, all right? With that said, let's just jump into the video, guys. What's up, y'all? This is your host, Hussein Nasser from IGM Tree, where we discuss, discuss software engineering by example. All right, and if you're new to this channel, we discuss all kind of software engineering topics. We have tutorials. We have uh, we talk about HTTP concepts. We talk about proxies, networking, anything, pretty much anything software engineering that excites me. I like to talk about it, right? Whether it's a technology that's five years old or new, right? And with that said, let's just jump into the video, guys, okay? And uh, this is what we're gonna do. We have, uh, I have here three different, I have a little web browser here, a web server that hosts uh, different three types of uh, files. I have an index.html file, I have a test.json file, which has this little baby, right? It's a very simple JSON file. And I have a binary file, which is program.7z, which is just like a zip file, which is a binary file. Cool, cool. And we're gonna learn how to use the Fetch API to pull these resources and interact with them in JavaScript, okay? Uh, what do you need? A Chrome browser, and then we can nicely just click on this puppy, right? And then go to more tools, then go to developer tools, and then that will open the console, which you can use to write JavaScript code. Right, and Fitch API is actually a JavaScript code, right? So you can do like console.log, hello world, and and just you can you can do any any kind of thing, right? Do uh, array, and then you can do for each console.log, right? And just do all kind of cool things, okay, guys? That's how we are gonna use the Fitch API, right? So the first thing we're gonna do is we will fetch the index html page okay and uh, this is how you do it fetch is a function that belongs actually in the window object so so you can either do window.fetch or you can just do fetch because it's the default default is window okay and uh, you can also install that if you want to do the fetch api in node you can install node fetch i think and you can i think it's the same exact api all right but well, this is a brow uh, this is a web standard so we can use it right and uh, you don't really need to install anything to play with this thing right and it works really with any page right we're gonna we're gonna work with that a little bit so index HTML, let's let's play with that right so we're gonna do fetch HTTP localhost 8080 and then index HTML, right so the first thing we do here is this will return a promise, okay, a JavaScript promise. And then a promise will basically get resolved and return for you only necessary information. It does not return everything. It will ask you, hey, this is what I got. I got this code. I got this HTTP code. I got this stuff, all right? So let's go ahead and just print whatever we get back, okay? And then we do dot catch in case of an error and then we do console dot error okay and let's see what we get back what we get back is actually a response and the response type is a basic and this is what we're interested in here okay which is in, in the in the in the status okay if it's successful we get that and then we get also the headers okay which you can use to interrogate the different kind 
of uh, the headers type okay it's like what we got here if you click on network you can see that the content type is text.html and based on that you can know that hey since I got back at the index I actually go ahead and fetch me the body I need to see the content right because we did not see the content here okay and to do that you get back this object which is this whatever r result or or a and then you can do r dot text which will force the content to be rendered as a text right and then that will get back and will be chained as another javascript promise which will then can be printed right let's do that so we're going to just go ahead and print that r which is the results as a result of this okay so what we get here is a response stream it's i think it's called and then you you ask the response to hey give me Give me a text. I know this thing is a text, right? You have to be really careful with this. Okay, so let's go ahead and just print it. And you, as you can see, we got back the index.html as it appears here. Okay, so you give page source, it exactly the same. Coolish, coolish. So that's how you do an index.html. How about we do a JSON, guys? Let's clear this and uh, let's, let's go ahead and clear that and then do up. Hopefully, we'll do that. And then let's do test.json. This time I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna fetch the test.json file. Okay, I'm gonna fetch this, as, fetch this as a text, right? And if I do that, I'm gonna get it as a text, as a string, which necessarily is okay, but you don't really wanna work with a text if it's a JSON. You want it as a JavaScript object, a beautiful JavaScript JSON. How do you do that? You literally ask it, hey, Dude, I know this is a JSON file, okay? So please give me an actual JSON object. If you do that, you get back a JSON object as you can see here. And then what does that mean really? So it means if you do r, r console.log, r dot, what was that, users? That will give you an array. And then if you do dot length, that will give you the element of array, which is one in this case. And as you can see, you got one, okay? So that's how you play with the objects if it's JSON. The final thing we wanna show is if it's a binary. And if you do program.7z, which is I know this is a binary, you can't really work with it as a JSON. You're gonna get an error, okay? Then let's, let's actually show you the error, how about that? If you do that, and then you enter, you can get an error, unexpected token, because it says, hey, this is a binary, but you're trying to convert it to a JSON, I'm sorry, right? So if you convert it into a text, that works, but it's ugly as F, right? <laughs> you don't really want to work with that. So what you're going to do here is uh, you want this as a blob, as a binary object. And once you do that, the browser will, will take care of actually giving you a blob stream, which you can use to stream this thing. So you can just, for example, print r dot, what was that, size? Yeah, so you can print the size of this file. I say it was 92 kilobyte, I think. This is 92 kilobyte? 900 kilobytes, all right? So that's essentially what, what we can do with the Fitchy API. We can do a lot of things, right? The Fitchy API also takes, um, takes another parameter. Let's clear this and show you that we can actually fetch anything, including Google, right? Google.com. You can we can use that to fetch it. So then uh, I know it's an HTML page, so I'm gonna go ahead and do text and then dot let's zoom out so you can see dot then dot console dot log and then dot catch uh, console dot error. Now let's hit that, and we're gonna get an error because of this course policy, right? Uh, cross origin policy, and I'm gonna reference the video that we did on cross origin policy here, All right, guys? So you can learn what exactly is this and how you can avoid it, right? So and the problem is like you cannot really ref 
fetch something resource from Google if you're not on Google okay they don't allow you to do that so I went to Google now and I did that and now we get an error because it's it should be HTTPS all right and then we do that and we get back the index of HTML file page which is look at that it's minified so it's like kind of kind of does not look very nice right so but you can play with this thing guys you can play and run with this uh, fetch API and okay? play with all these kind of things all right so if you go to like the request here you can see it said the status is we made a request and it was on the HTTP google.com and it was status code 200 and we can get all these response headers including the caching including the content type right so let's try one more thing hopefully it works if I do this again right cool right if I do this again but what I want to do here is I want to instead of doing the text I want to print the headers which is content type give me what content type is this okay and if you do this you immediately get this thing right okay you actually get the text slash HTML characters at UTF-8 which if you click on this guy it's nothing but this puppy right so you can interrogate and pull the content type or any header really as right the content length right using this method right so that's how you do it guys all right guys hope you enjoyed this video right very short and uh just like getting your your uh feet started wet with this um uh, API and I'm gonna use this as a reference for my future videos because I'm, I'm gonna do a lot of videos on Fitch API uh, playing with the headers and all that thing and I want uh, a reference video to talk about the basics and this is it all right guys with that said uh, you guys stay awesome check out the other content in this channel subscribe if you like this content and give this video a like and I'm gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome